Hey, glad to have everybody here. Now we're going to continue right now our discussion on how you prove that triangles are similar to one another. Well, you learned in the last video how you use the angle-angle similarity postulate to prove that two triangles are similar. Now we're going to use the SSS and the SAS similarity theorems in order to prove that two triangles are similar, as you see written in the goal. All right, two new theorems for us to learn. I want to describe each of them and kind of explain their significance. Just generally speaking, remember that similar figures have to have all their corresponding sides and uh, be proportional to one another, and all their corresponding angles have to be congruent. But with triangles, it turns out you can just use the sides or just use the angles to prove that they are similar to one another. We've learned how to use the angles. Now the SSS similarity theorem is going to help us use the sides only without knowing the angle measures to prove the two triangles are similar. All right. Now, you see that I've given you all the side lengths of each of these two triangles here. Okay? And so, how do we use just the side lengths to determine that the triangles are similar? Well, it's very simple. Remember, similar figures have to have sides that are proportional to one another. The corresponding sides all have to be proportional. So, all I need to be able to do is show that the ratios between the pairs of corresponding sides here and here are all equal to one another. So, what would those ratios look like then? Well, you determine whether you want to put the smaller figure over the larger figure or vice versa. So I'm going to do the smaller over the larger here. We need to show that the ratio between AB and its corresponding side DE equals the ratio between BC right, and its corresponding side EF as well as the ratio between AC and its corresponding side from the other triangle, DF. Okay, now, are those ratios actually equal to one another? Well, let's check that out. 10 over 15 simplifies to 2 thirds, right? 6 over 9 simplifies to 2 thirds. And 12 over 18 also simplifies to 2 thirds. So, since all the pairs of corresponding sides have the same ratio, that means the triangles are similar to one another. So here's how we would kind of write that out. If the ratios between all the correspondings as listed here are equal to one another, then triangle ABC will be similar to triangle DEF. Okay, so you can show that all three pairs of sides are proportional to one another in order to prove that two triangles are similar. That's the SSS similarity theorem. Now, how about the SAS, or side angle side similarity theorem? Well, as the name might suggest, you're using two pairs of sides and their included angles in order to prove that two triangles are similar using SAS similarity theorem. Now, I've drawn a picture here where I've given you the distances for two pairs of sides, okay? And I gave you the measures of their included angles. Remember what an included angle is. This 41 degree angle is included by the sides that are 9 and 15 because it's the angle formed by those pairs of sides. Same with angle D right here. It's formed by DE and DS, so it's their included angle. Now, just like in SSS, what we care about as far as the side lengths go is are the corresponding sides proportional to one another? So, in other words, we care about whether the ratio between AB and DE is equal to the ratio of AC and DF. Now, think about what the relationship is between, between corresponding angles of similar figures is supposed to be. It's supposed to be that they're congruent to one another. And a 41 degree angle is congruent to a 41 degree angle, right? Um, so you need to know that angle A is congruent to angle D. Now, if you know that two, those two pairs of sides are proportional to one another, and you know that their included angles are congruent, we can say then that triangle ABC is similar to triangle DEF. 
And indeed, you can see that's the case here. The ratio of AB to DE is a 9 to 12 ratio, which is equal to 3 fourths. The ratio of AC to DF is 15 to 20, which is also 3 fourths. And of course, you can easily tell that the two included angles of those pairs of proportional sides are congruent to one another. All right, so that's SAS similarity theorem. Now, over the next few problems that we're going to look at, what you're going to be doing is determining whether the triangles are similar, and I want an explanation. Are you using SSS? Are you using SAS? Angle, angle is a possibility still because there are three ways to prove that triangles are similar, three shortcut ways anyway. So let's take a look at these pairs of triangles and talk about, well, what is the strategy you use? How do you know which type of theorem or postulate to uh, try to employ whenever you're trying to determine triangles are similar? Well, that's simply based on the measurements that you're given. In this case, you can see that I'm given all the side lengths of one triangle and all the side lengths of another triangle and none of the angle measures, which means that SSS is the only possible way you're going to determine whether these triangles are similar. Now remember, you have to show that all the pairs of sides have equal corresponding ratios. How do we know which sides correspond with one another? No, the easiest thing to do is probably look for the longest sides of the triangle and say they correspond, the shortest sides of the triangle and say they correspond. So, for instance, PR, we know that's going to correspond with LN, and so let's go ahead and make a ratio out of those two. And the ratio of PR to LN is equal to 20 over 25, which is 4 fifths. All right, then let's go with the medium length size. Let's say PQ and ML will correspond with one another. We want to make a ratio between those as well. The ratio of PQ to ML is 16 over 20. That's four fifths. All right, so far so good. Now make sure you check all the corresponding sides. Make sure they all have the same ratio. Let's make the ratio then between the shortest sides of these two triangles, RQ and MN. That's equal to 10 over 12. 10 over 12 simplifies to 5 over 6. Well, not all the pairs of corresponding sides have the same ratio. Two of them did, but not all three of them. And they all three have to be in the same corresponding ra or same ratio if you want the triangles to be similar. So we're going to say no. And our explanation as to why they're not is because the ratio between RQ and MN is not equal to the ratio of, say, PR to LN. I really could have said it was not equal to PQ over ML. Any of those statements would have been sufficient to show that not all the pairs of sides had the same ratio. All right, so those triangles were not similar. Are these triangles similar to one another, and how will we determine that? Well, this time... I'm not giving all the side links, am I? You don't know how long AC and DE are, so don't bother trying to use SSS. Let's see if we can then use SAS or angle angle. Well, there's only one pair of angles that you can say are congruent because these vertical angles here have to be congruent to one another, right? No parallel lines to say that you have altered interior angles that are congruent or any such thing. So then it looks like we're going to be trying SAS because we can try to show that these two pairs of sides have the same ratios with their corresponding sides right here. Now how do we know which ones correspond? Well let's make the shorter two correspond with one another and the longer two correspond with one another. So we're going to see if the ratio between CB and DB which is 7.5 over 5, whether that's equal to the ratio between AB and EB, which is 12 over 8. Okay, now there's decimals involved here, and so let's just remind you of the ways you can see if two ratios are equal when decimals are involved. You can still simplify those ratios. One thing I can do is just move the decimal over one place in each of these in each of the numerator and the denominator, make that 75 over 50, and then you ought to be able to see that that is two-thirds. Or rather, that's three to two, isn't it, right? Okay, so a three to two ratio for CB to DB, and then 12 over eight also happens to be three over two. 
Now remember the other thing you could have done was set this ratio equal to that ratio and seen if the cross products were equal to one another and they would have been 7.5 times 8 would have equaled 5 times 12. They both would have equaled 60. All right, so what we've done then is determined that these pairs of triangles have two pairs of sides that have pairs of corresponding sides with equal ratios and that the included angles of those proportional sides are congruent. So we can say yes these triangles are similar using the SAS similarity theorem. All right, one more picture where we're going to try to determine are two triangles similar to one another. Take a look, and hopefully you see the triangles. I got one inside of the other. Triangle GFJ, we're going to try to see if that similar to triangle HKJ, which is contained within. Now, there's people tend to get whether these are similar or not, but they tend not to necessarily have the exact correct, exactly correct logic. One thing you'll notice here is that we don't know the length of FG and HK, and so we don't know all the side lengths. We can't possibly use side, side, side. We don't know any angle measures, so angle, angle seems out, doesn't it? We don't know whether FG is parallel to HK. It doesn't tell us that, so we can't use the corresponding angles postulate to get congruent angles, for instance. But we do have enough information to find two pairs of side lengths, GJ as well as FJ. And a thing that can often get overlooked is the fact that these two triangles, the bigger one and the smaller one, share angle J. It's angle G. JF in the larger triangle, angle HJK in the smaller triangle, those are congruent to one another, right? So, it looks to me like we can use SAS, because hopefully we can show that uh, two sides, the top side of each triangle, have the same ratio with their corresponding side, well, has the same ratio as the bottom sides of each triangle do, and their included angles are congruent. Now, when I'm saying it's easy to make a mistake in your logic in determining if these two triangles are similar, here's what I mean. Almost everybody can see here that 3 is half of 6 and 3.5 is half of 7, so you'd say, yeah, those ratios are equal. But make sure you're making ratios between the corresponding sides of the triangle. GH is only this distance right here. That's not the side length of any triangle in this picture. Similarly, FK is not the side length of any triangle in this picture. What we need to do is we need to be comparing the top side, the entire top side of the larger triangle with the entire, well, with the top side of the smaller triangle. So we need to use GJ and compare that with HJ. Now that ratio is going to equal 9 over 6 because GJ would have to be this 3 plus the 6 put together, right? And that's a 3 to 2 ratio. And then we're going to compare all of the bottom side of the big triangle, FJ, with the bottom side of the smaller triangle, KJ. And we want to see, is that ratio equal to the other one? So FJ to KJ, well, 3.5 plus 7 is 10.5. And then we'll say that's equal to 7. If I use the same trick as I did last time and move the decimal over one place each, that becomes 105 over 70. Each of those is divisible by 35 and simplifies then to a 3 to 2 ratio. So yes, we have two pairs of sides that have equal ratios, two pairs of corresponding sides with equal ratios, and their included angles are congruent to one another. So again, we can say yes, these triangles are similar, and our reasoning, or the theorem that justifies that, is the SAS similarity theorem. All right, you now have three ways to prove that trials are similar. Guys, thanks for your attention. Good luck. See ya.